All right. How you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News. And here is an Aimless News update on news around the world for January 14th, 2021. Now, don't get uh, upset, YouTube. I'm not saying this. Norwegian Medicines Agency is saying this. The Norwegian Medicines Agency links 13 deaths to vaccine side effects. Those who died were frail and old. This is from Norway Today. The Norwegian Medicines Agency linked 13 deaths to the corona vaccine side effects. Those who died had two things in common. They were old and they were frail. A total of 23 deaths have been reported in connection with the corona vaccination. Once again, YouTube, I'm not saying this. The Norwegian Medicines Agency is saying this. So far, 13 of these have been assessed. The reports might indicate that common side effects from our mRNA vaccines, such as fever and nausea, may have led to deaths in some frail patients. Chief Physician Sigurd or Timo in the Norwegian Medicines Agency noted, the Norwegian Medicine Agency and National Institute of Public Health jointly assess all side effects reports. As a result, the FHI has updated the Corona Vaccination Guide with new advice on the vaccination of frail elderly people. If you are very frail, you should probably not be vaccinated. Steiner Madsen at the Norwegian Medicines Agency said at a webinar on Corona Vaccine for journalists on Thursday. And with that in mind, let's take a look at this next story. Los Angeles students required to get COVID-19 vaccine before returning to school. This is from the New York Post. Austin Butner, the superintendent of Los Angeles Unified School District, said Monday that students will have to receive the inoculation once it is available before heading back into the classroom, according to a report. The Los Angeles Times reported that Butner compared the move to how schools already require vaccinations for measles and mumps. He said that he hopes all students in the system will be vaccinated by January 2022. Okay, mandatory vaccinations, okay. And this is David Cicilline. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. My apologies if I'm not. A Democrat from Rhode Island. Following the science, you know, because some Democrats, they like to follow that science. Here we go. Let's watch how he handles his sneeze. Are you kidding me? He takes his mask off, sneezes into his hand, and I'm not sure what he does with it after that, but that can't be good. <laughs> Moving right on with the aimless news, New York Times suggests wearing two masks instead of one. There he is, the demented one. With two masks on, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, also known as the CDC, says to stem the spread of COVID-19, all Americans should wear a mask. The New York Times says, if one mask works, maybe two will be twice as nice. Football coaches do it. President-elects do it. President-elects do it. Yeah, you saw that. Even science-savvy senators do it. As cases of the coronavirus continue to surge on a global scale, some of the nation's most prominent people have begun to double up on masks, a move that researchers say is increasingly being backed up by data. The Times cites Lindsay Marr, an expert in virus transmission at Virginia Tech, who said, if you combine multiple layers, you start achieving pretty high efficiencies of blocking viruses from exiting and even entering the nose or mouth. So I guess he's saying that the mask haven't been working at all? And maybe we should try two? He's actually admitting that the masks do not work? 
Okay, I didn't say that. These guys said that. Lindsey Marr. Of course, there's a drawback. We run the risk of making it too hard to breathe. Well, I don't know if that's so bad. If you can at least block the virus, do you really need to be able to breathe? What a minute detail, I say. Okay, in other news, CNN announced that the network would be ending their airport network. Jeff Zucker, president of CNN. Today we are announcing that the CNN airport network will end operations as of March 31st. So if you ever wondered why CNN is on the airport all the time, it's because they were paying to be on the airport all the time. People didn't watch that, watch that crap. They forced it on you. And here's a live look at CNN's ratings the moment they go off of TV at the airports. <laughs> okay, here's a nice story. I can't wait to see what happens. YouTube rival Rumble is suing Google because Google owns YouTube for at least $2 billion, saying the search engine, the search giant, abuses its, its monopoly power. The video sharing site Rumble has accused Google of unfairly rigging its search algorithm, no, to favor YouTube's videos in search results, marking the tech giant's latest in a series of antitrust headaches. Rumble, based in Toronto, filed a lawsuit in California on Monday, claiming that Google had unfairly costed viewers and advertising res revenue because of its search algorithms and pre-installation of the YouTube app on Android devices. Google, through its search engines, was able to wrongfully divert massive traffic to YouTube, depriving Rumble of the additional traffic, users, uploads, brand awareness, and revenue it would have otherwise received, the complaint said. And I will put the link in the description, and here is the actual complaint. Rumble versus Google, if you would like to go check that out. Can't wait to see what happens with that one. And finally, to wrap this episode up, EU gives the green light to snacking on worms because there is a war on meat. The European Food Safety Agency has given the green light to snacking on worms. These mealworms could be used as a protein-rich snack, or you could eat some beef jerky, or an ingredient for other foods. Like what? Environmentalist Dr. Kara Augustenberg sorry, told the hard shoulder, this is the way our diets are moving. Yeah, that's the way the agenda's moving. I don't know if our diets are moving that way. They're the kind of worms you would feed if you have a turtle or a protein-eating fish. Well, if it's good enough for my turtle and my fish, it's good enough for me. They're very small worms, very crunchy, and can be served roasted or mixed into a smoothie. A crunchy worm smoothie. Why didn't I think of that? She said the EU is also looking at other edible insects, such as crickets. Why wouldn't you? We know that the plant-based and alternative meats industry has grown enormously over the last decade due to our increasing propaganda agenda of constantly beating you over the head with it. Oh, wait, that wasn't in there. And edible insects are part of that because they're very protein and vitamin rich. So is meat. And they can serve as an alternative source of protein. Why? We have a great source of protein. It's called meat. And that's going to do it for today's episode of The Aimless News. Like and share this video because The Aimless News must be told.